Hey there everyone, uh, welcome to this little video. Uh, my name is Brian and this video is for my teacher friends. Uh, a couple things. First off, I've been a part of a professional development course over the last couple weeks here in the summer of 2020 where we're thinking a lot about how to do something called structured remote learning. And basically what we're trying to figure out is what happens when we take all of our learning from the classroom into the online space. And I've heard many of my teacher colleague friends in this particular course talk about how are they gonna keep doing video and make that process sustainable? And I have a couple ideas about that. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to think about is writing a script. And I don't mean like a full on script, like in a movie with dialogue and everything else. What I'm really talking about is having a list in front of you, a bulleted list perhaps, and I'm gonna get out my phone here and show you what I got going on. So as you guys can see at the top, I've got my little camera set up, but below that, I've got my script that is telling me what I'm gonna talk about. And this helps cut down on the many takes that you could potentially have in this particular circumstance. This is also your chance, I also looked down there for a second to look at my script. This is also your chance to be a little bit more you, let your students see a little bit more of you in terms of your process, how you might be in the classroom. Uh, what we're learning in this professional development course is, yeah, we can throw all our stuff up online and students can learn in that particular way, but one of the ways that they buy into our course is by buying into us a little bit. So the more that you can um, be really direct, not waste people's time, and let your students see a little bit of you within this process, I think it can be beneficial. So script it out. Now the next step, keep it simple. And there's one way to really do this. You first off, you just have to think about what you have in your hand and that's your phone. And that phone can be the thing that will allow you to just keep things simple. You don't have to have a big camera to make this work or a microphone on top of that. And if you shoot with this, uh, you can make some pretty quick videos that allow you to get content to your students pretty quickly beyond screencasts because we want our students to see us engaged with the material. One of the ways that you can particularly do this is, yeah, I just looked down again at my script. Uh, one of the ways you can do this is with uh, a little stick like this. It's a little tripod, bendy tripod. And I bought this for like maybe 10 or $12 on Amazon. But the thing that it came with that I use all the time is this mount for my phone. And let me show you how that works. Okay, so here's how this works. I, I got it put together after a minute or two. Uh, you can see the phone fits on the tripod like so. I've got a little bit of space here for arm extension to sort of put it outward to let myself talk more or less, which is totally off camera, which you totally can't see. When I point it out in this direction, you can see that um, I have the ability to talk to my students in a way that is very immediate and it can be very quick and it can just get done and you could throw this up onto YouTube or stream and you are good to go. Um, we wanna also make this uh, as sustainable as possible. Okay, so once you get comfortable making videos, posting videos, captioning videos, and your students seem okay with what you're putting up as a way to uh, enhance the content of the course, you might now wanna start to think about uh, what's around you when you make the videos. And I'm talking background. So for instance, you can see I'm sitting in front of a background here and it's basically just old DVDs and uh, patches that used to belong to my father-in-law who was in the Marine Corps and the fire police back in the day. Uh, and I think there are some pictures of my family around here too, as well as uh, some other stuff. And I just purposefully arranged these things to have something that would look okay in my deepest, darkest basement. And I'm gonna kind of show you what I mean here. Uh, using another camera, you can see this place is just dark and horrible. And I had to make this uh, extra cake pan light here, which I'll talk about in another video um, as a way to get some light on my face because there's just not much going on down here. But the background is just one way for you to think about having this visually appealing space where you can sit down, make your videos, and then move on to the next thing. I would say too, if you don't really want to worry about background, just choose to do your videos in a place with a lot of natural light. A lot of natural light is like one of the best things ever. You can have almost anything back there and the room will look good because of the way, the way the lighting comes into the room. Yeah, so think about the background. Yeah, I kind of like, kind of like that. At least I like it. You may not, I don't know, but there you go. So another way to up your game once you're feeling comfortable is to get something called a lav 
lavalier microphone. So what's a lavalier microphone? It's basically one that goes on your lapel like so, um, and it allows you to sort of up that sound game a little bit. And you can plug this into a camera, your phone, or computer. So this is the lavalier microphone, as you can see. It clips onto your shirt. It's got a little extra cord, and it has this particular plug with three prongs. Um, I'm gonna show you this a little bit closer. This is gonna be awkward for a second. Try this again. There we go, three rings. This will hook into your camera and your phone, but it will not connect to your computer. You need, oh, sorry, I had this off camera. You need one of these little dudes, which actually came with the one I bought. It has um, two plugs. You need this one here that has two rings that will actually plug into your PC slash Mac. What's great about this is you can improve your uh, microphone game for when you do screencasts or Blackboard Collaborate, and keep this in mind. A lot of us are working with computers that are super old. My Mac is from 2012, and so that means I'm working with 2012 camera and microphone technology. And this little, this little dude here, this little lavalier microphone can really help up that um, microphone game. And believe me, sound goes a long way in a video. And this is really cheap. Um, I'll link to this in the description, $15 on Amazon. Okay, so I've moved off my normal space that's actually lit, and I wanted to show you a little setup that I got going on down here for like a really simple setup that a person could potentially use using a phone, tripod, and a camera mount. So let's have a look. So this is it right here. As you can see, I've got my script going on, I've got my phone, and I've moved it all in front of this little backdrop right here. So um, I'm gonna have a go at this. I've also uh, put on a little lavalier microphone and hopefully we'll be able to get something that's usable. So let's get into the shot. Okay, everyone, um, I switched spaces to another backdrop, which is my bookcase, which you can see here. Though I'm not a fan of the big white spaces on, on either side, I can't really go in any further, but that's something I could work out. Another issue I'm seeing here is I keep wanting to look into the screen of my phone rather than to the actual camera. So that's something to keep in mind as you move through this process. It's that little hole, that's your camera. Um, see, I just did it again, I'm looking over here. Um, but I'm interested to see how this goes because it is pretty quick. It's just on the tripod and on the mount. And um, hopefully the uh, sound will be pretty decent on the other side. And there's a lot of opportunity here to, to make videos that your students can see uh, really quickly, really easy. So it's just, it's as simple as me sitting down and saying, hey, look, this is week four. This is what we're doing in week four. Go and do this, this, and this in Blackboard. Check out this, this, and this. Um, and you could even do screencasts and put them in the corner, a little picture in picture kind of thing if you feel really super adventurous in terms of the work. But there's opportunity here to be able to let your students see you, see your enthusiasm more or less, uh, to make your class work so it's not just a stale online kind of thing. Yeah, no one likes that. <laughs> okay, I got one last, uh... I got one last thing to say, uh, but I gotta fix that real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, can you say green screen? Um, somebody gave me this as a gift some years ago. I've used it maybe once. Oh. Or twice, I'm not sure. There was a traffic accident in Lake Linganore this morning. Oh? Are you serious? I made the volleyball team! Woo woo! Let's go! But if you have one and you want to not worry about backgrounds, you can put yourself in front of a green screen and then you can put whatever uh, behind yourself that you want. And I, and I think a lot of people are doing this for Zoom backgrounds as well. However, uh, during doing this thing within video editing is definitely not quick and it will definitely um, test your patience and skills in post-production video editing. So that's all I have today. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I wish you well in your teaching endeavors in, in the structured remote environment and peace to you. See you in the next one. Mm. Holy cow, did you hear that? It's like a big old helicopter flying over my house. It's huge.
This is what happens when you make videos. Helicopters fly over, the neighbor starts doing a lawnmower, next thing you know, it's like a chorus. <laughs>